Good evening, and welcome to Monday, News 5 Special Edition. I'm Phil Wilson. And I'm Twyla Young. These are some very special people, mentally handicapped kids attending a public school. They're learning some important lessons. One of them is that they can make their way in the outside world. The turbulent 60s took their toll on many of the nation's establishments. One of those establishments was the church. They sort of uh, opted out. Some of them uh, became the flower children, and they talked about love, and they talked about all of the nice things, but they were doing these things all outside the concepts and the ideals that were held in the organized and established religious modes. And if disco is the latest thing in dancing, the teen or non-alcoholic variety is the latest thing in disco. Oh, I don't know. I think they just like to get out and play like they're adults, you know, get into the older scene a little bit. They like to mingle and, you know, get to meet each other and whatnot. A few years ago, mentally handicapped kids were virtually denied from ever having a chance to make it in everyday life. They were consigned to institutions. Today in Iowa, that's not always the case, thanks to a program called Special Education. The students in my classroom are all mentally disabled trainable. It means they all have IQs below 50, between 30 and 50. They are selected for this school by um, school psychologist, teacher assessment, parent. Um, it's a combination of IQs and adaptive behavior skill. Those two things come to play. These are among 400 students at the new Wilshire Beardshire School in Ames. The school is devoted to what is called special education. Most of the students here have special problems. Some have mental, physical, or emotional disabilities. In this class, all the students are mentally retarded. But that isn't to say that they can't learn some basics. The students in my room won't be reading for literacy level, fourth grade. They won't be being able to pick up a newspaper and get out information or content out of a, out of a newspaper or a Time magazine. But they all, most of them will be reading for leisure skills, being able to pick up a, a first grade book and reading for enjoyment. Those that won't be able to do that, most will all be reading functional basic science, signs that will help them within their environment and within the community. Uh, as simple as reading names on a restroom, men, women, uh, in and out, up, down, being able to operate an elevator. Class discipline in many schools is a problem, and yet here, despite some mental handicaps, the children's behavior seemed above average. And when it wasn't, a mild scolding seemed to get results. Today the kids are getting ready for a treat, a field trip to North Grand Mall. They'll be given time to roam about on their own and to buy small items with money they brought from home. Gum, that's what said. Think again. Gum and candy. Gum. But the kids will also have a shopping assignment. Today it will be the Walden Bookshop. Class preparation will take 10 hours. We first began with um, learning to read the name and we had a worksheet on just identifying the name of the store. We had another worksheet on identifying the name of the store when it's uh, intermingled with other names, okay, with distractors. We then, um, oh, practice on what you can buy. Look at your paper. What can you buy at Walden Books? Listen, what can you buy? Can. What can you buy? You can buy a book about what, pig? Okay? Oh, Peggy says that you can buy a, a calendar. You can buy a calendar at, at well, what, sir, can you buy a shirt? No. Everyone loves a shopping trip, and for these kids, it's a special kind of adventure, a chance to test their new knowledge and how to apply it away from the classroom. After arriving at the shopping center, the kids get a brief refresher on today's assignment. They're given picture cards identifying certain picture books. Their challenge, to find the store, then locate the books.
we followed one of the students who moved ahead with the single-minded purpose of a veteran shopper. He not only located the bookstore immediately, but walked straight to the book he was assigned to find. Some others took longer. This boy, who can barely read, has to first find the children's section, then locate a book about things to do. Three teacher's aides went along on the trip to help the students solve identification problems. As for the boy who immediately found the book on horses, his teacher said the field trips have had a beneficial result. When he first started, his, uh, his behavior was completely different from what it is now. He didn't have any orientation skills in the shopping center. He didn't know where any of the stores were. Uh, his behavior, he didn't know how to act. This improvement was not an isolated act. Repeated shopping trips to the mall have affected the whole class. On our very first trip, the uh, well, we were really, be really surprised with the behavior on all the students. We had um, a couple individuals that walked through the fountain and ended up with soggy shoes for the rest of the day. We had one person uh, shut a lady in a dressing room closet. We had another, uh, another student who found gum underneath a, underneath a chair and then was chewing that. That was really neat because he had found some free gum. Any special kind of book you like the best? Cat book. Cat book. You like cats? Yeah. What, what are good about cats? Meow. Meow? <laughs> what kind of book? Wolfman book. Wolfman? Mm-hmm. Any other book? How's that? What kind? Wolfman. Wolfman, that's it, huh? Mm -hmm. And then it was lunchtime. All the kids placed their own orders and counted out their own money. We had uh, one girl who has, and still has, very limited language skills. She, uh, she wanted to eat a fish sandwich. That was her very favorite thing to eat. She associated that with diet food and with a weight problem. She uh, couldn't say an F sound for anything and really wanted a fish sandwich. And she practiced and she practiced. When we came to Hardy's and she ordered a, a fish sandwich with the F sound um, completely independently on her own. And uh, what greater reward could you have is when that lady understood her and then gave her a fish sandwich. Quite a triumph. It really was. This program has been operating in Ames for only two years. That may not be long enough to measure the chances for long-term success. But from what we saw, the program is working. The, go the overall goal is that we want people to become as independent as possible, working up to their capabilities. We have people in the project, students that are shopping completely independently without knowing any money, without being able to identify money. They can't make change. We have people in the project that have very low language skills and that are ordering lunch independently. They've, they've already gone further in the project than we ever initially thought that they would. At one time, students of this IQ range were in institutions, but now these children are in, back in the community. Phil, even though this school is actually in Ames, it has students from other school districts as well in it, doesn't it? Yes, uh, they come from both uh, Boone County and Story County. Annual cost of that program, by the way, is a million dollars. Okay. Styles of religion are about as varied as anything people can involve themselves in, and there are a lot of reasons that people turn to religion. Coming up next on Bob Pyle's Notebook, we'll look at religion in Iowa and some of the changes it's undergoing.